Hello everyone and welcome to this month's webinar. This one is all about the new childcare package. Well, it's been around for a little while now, but I thought I'd just update um, the webinar I did earlier in the year when it first came out. There's a few numbers have changed and things like that, so I just wanted to make sure that um, any changes they've made in the last 12 months since it's came in, we've got them uh, all covered here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm sort of redoing uh, one that I did um, earlier in the year. Okay. So, if anyone hasn't seen any of my webinars before, I'm Derek Nolan. I'm the owner of 12 Child Accountants. Been doing these webinars for uh, many years, um, both for um, small businesses and uh, for individuals. So, uh, hopefully, if you, if you haven't seen any of them before, go and look at my website, um, www.12.com.au and go to webinars, and uh, hopefully there's a few other things that you might be interested in. Okay. So let's get started today. So I'm going to call it the new childcare subsidy. Now, as you can see, it commenced on the 2nd of July, 2018. So it's been around for nearly a year. Obviously, it depends on when you're watching um, this video. So there was a lot of changes happened um, about 12 months ago. So I think most people now, if you, particularly if you only just um, have children going into childcare now, you probably don't care about what the old, um, the old rules um, used to be. But we'll briefly go through that. Um, today for those people that just want to know what's actually happened. So basically what happened before 1st of July or the 2nd of July 2018, you had two, two bonuses or two payments or two rebates, whatever you want to call it. One was the childcare benefit and the other one was the childcare rebate. Now, they came in at different stages over the last 12 or 15 years um, and, um, they you know, they're based on um, a number of asset tests and income tests and a few other things like that. What's happened now, those things now have been combined to one single childcare subsidy. So it's easier now to probably talk about just the one, you don't have to get confused between the, the other two. So now, the first thing you need to do is everyone asks the same questions, well, am I eligible? Because the way it used to be where a lot of people were eligible for the childcare rebate, but they weren't eligible for the childcare benefit. So, but some people are eligible for both. Now, this one just having the one, that's the pretty good question as are you eligible? We'll go through that in a sec. So basically, if you care for a child under the age of 13 and they're not attending secondary school, you basically you're eligible. So basically, yeah, you know, most most children who are going to um, uh, who are going to school yet. Secondly, you need to use an approved childcare service. Now, this is really important, and we'll go through this a little bit later on. The difference between a registered childcare provider and an approved childcare provider it used to be really important uh, regarding the uh, childcare rebate before, because you didn't get the childcare rebate for uh, a registered centre, but you only got it for an approved. So they've used that. Um, for the, the subsidy. And you need to be the person who's actually responsible for paying the childcare fees. In some situations, you may actually be salary sacrificing this through your work. So if you're not actually physically paying it and you're salary sacrificing it before tax, um, that's probably the only time I can think of that might be uh, responsible. Um, and there's also some residency and immunization requirements you need to, to follow. Okay. The second question people ask is, well, how much do I get? How much of the subsidy will I receive? It's a pretty good question. Um, so again, unfortunately, it's not an easy answer. It's a combination of three things. The first thing of those is your income. So it's income tested. Now, before I go any further, the good thing about this, the child gets subsidy, is it is income tested, you know, which is fair enough. It's not asset tested though. A lot of things that go through Centrelink um, are both income tested and asset tested. This isn't, okay, it's only just income tested. But it does look at the combined family income. And we'll go through what the definition of that and what it actually is included in that later on. The second thing you need to um, look at is the activity level of the parents. And what they mean by the activity level, I'll go through the details in a second, is basically how much they're working. Now there's other things besides working, there's study and there's looking for work and things like that. But that's the second thing you need to look at is the activity level of the parents. 
And the third thing is then to look at the type of childcare centre you go to. You might be looking at a before and after school care. You might be looking at a long day care. You might be looking at a preschool. And the important thing about that one is the type of childcare um, centre that you use will determine how much you get as well. So they're the three things that you need to determine to work out what or how much you're going to get as your subsidy. Okay. Before I go any further, there is a couple of things to know, is that there is a cap. So with the subsidies, basically the, the, um, the Family Assistance Office is giving you money towards looking after your child, putting your child through, um, through childcare. But there comes a limit. And what they've actually done for some reason is they've made a, a line in the sand at $186,958. If your combined family income, and we'll get to that, how that's calculated in a minute, is less than 186,958, there's no cap. So you can actually get as much family um, uh, subsidy, your childcare subsidy as possible. Um, if you go over that amount and between uh, 186,958 and 351,248, which is a reasonable amount, the cap is just over $10,000. Now, it used to always be a cap for the rebate. Um, I think it was about seven and a half, went up to $10,000. So they sort of kept that in play. But it's interesting how there's no cap um, for the under $186,000. Okay. okay, so what we're gonna look at first is the combined family income. So we'll go through each of these three um, components on how much you uh, receive um, one by one. But the first one, is the combined family income. Now you think this would be fairly straightforward. A family's income, um, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but it's not. Now, the important thing to know here is why, why it's important. So what I've drawn here, and it's hard to find this information, is that the subsidy is a percentage. Now I'll get to the amount uh, a little bit later on, but it's a percentage, so it's called a level of subsidy. Now, under the old system, it was sort of like a sliding scale from 100% down to zero. Under the new one, it's the maximum amount you can get is 85%. Now, it's 85% of what? I'll get to that in a minute. But 85% is the highest you can get. Then, as you can see there, your combined income, if it's less than $66,958, you get your 85% rating. After $66,000, it starts to fall. And it gradually falls down to where your combined income is $171,958. So you'll actually find a lot of people fit in that category because that's a, that's a reasonable income um, between 66 and 171. So depending on where you are in that section, your rating could be somewhere between 85 to 50%. And that's how it works, okay? Then there's a period where between 171 and 251, it stays at 50%. And then as you can see by the graph there, it then starts falling away after 251,248 down to $341,000. Then there's a little period when it actually there's no um, fall. Then by the time you get to 351,248, um, you don't get any subsidy anymore. So as you can see down the bottom there, the subsidy gradually decreases for, at 1% for every $3,000 in that sliding area. So if you look at the dark purple there, that sliding area, to roughly work out where you are, so if you're on, say, combined income $100,000, you'd work out, well, I'm... Um, about $33,000 past the 80%. So divide that by um, that $3,000 and you'll work out what percent you've dropped off 85%. Pretty straightforward. So um, for all you visual spatial people out there, I've done this graph, which makes it um, much, much easier to, to understand. So just remember, the level of subsidy is what that combined income is actually trying to work out. Okay. So what's in your combined um, family income? So the simple thing you would think would be just go to your taxable income on your tax assessment. So every year you'll do a tax return 
and whatever your gross income is um, after your deductions, well, that's your taxable income. Now, in most cases, that's that's the easiest way to work out what your gross income is. So um, I won't go through a lot of detail today, but basically what will happen is that at the start of the year, you'll be asked to estimate your income. Now, most people will know really closely what their income is likely to be. What will happen, though, is the family assistance office will work out your childcare subsidy based on what you tell them. So you can tell them your income is $66,000 and you get the 85%. Now, what they know, though, in 12 months' time or sometime in the next you know, uh, fi uh, financial year, you'll have to lodge your tax return. And from that, they'll see whether how close you are. You might end up being closer to $171,000, which is the 50% level. So they'll actually ask for some money back and things like that. So don't freak out too much when they ask you what your estimate is. But most of the time, you don't want to be sort of too far below because people hate giving money back at the end of the year. Anyhow, getting back to what's actually in your combined family income. So your gross income basically is your, you know, what's in your tax return, less your allowable deductions equals your taxable income. Straight off the tax assessment. Now, <clears throat> family assistance get that, okay? So once they know you're receiving a childcare subsidy, they will request that information from the tax office. There's nothing you can do about that. They'll actually have that within probably a week or two of you lodging your tax return. And then they'll compare that to what you actually told them at the start of the year. However, it's never that simple. So what you also have to do is you have to take your taxable income and there's some other adjustments you need to do to that amount to come out with what your separate net income is. Now your separate net income is used for a lot of things like if you've got a hex debt, um, um, also for your healthcare rebate and a few other things like that. Anyhow, <clears throat> the other adjustments, I'll go through those in a sec. So your separate net income, you start with your taxable income. Now, some of those um, adjustments are um, if you're getting a reportable fringe benefits. Now, on your PAYG summary, there's a box that says reportable fringe benefit. That might be for a car. It might be for um, people that um, are getting the travel um, concessions um, and, and things like that. So it's not taxable but there's an amount put in your PAYG summary exactly for this purpose. So there's a value there. So a lot of people might be working for a not-for-profit organization and they're allowed to salary sacrifice a lot of things up to about $16,000, $17,000. So either they're not paying tax on it, it appears on their groups, the PAYG summary, and they have to add that sixteen dollars or $17,000 to their taxable income just to make it fair because people are salary sacrificing. Um, if you're running your own business, um, whether it's your um, main business or one on the side, and it's making a loss, well, that loss gets added back. So you might be working somewhere and you've got $100,000 income, but you've got a business on the side, which is a loss of $20,000. So it actually drops your income down to um, $80,000. They say, well, really, we don't like people having like business incomes dropping their income. So we're going to make you add that back to the $100,000. Uh, same with investment losses. If you happen to a, your taxable income dropped because you had investment losses, they get added back. Um, also, if you go and salary sacrifice superannuation more than the nine and a half percent, so you know, obviously there's a compulsory bit. So if you're on a hundred thousand dollars a year, they'll be uh, your employer will be putting nine and a half percent into your super. But if you want to do more than that, what actually happens? Your taxable income drops. For family assistance um, and childcare subsidy, they want to add that amount back. So that's why it actually appears on your PAYG summary as well. Um, other things like you could actually, there's some um, tax-free pensions um, that need to be included uh, as well. And finally, the big one is rental losses. Probably not as um, common as it used to be, but a lot of people that negatively gear in um, their investment properties, that is really good for tax because it drops their tax and the, the, um, the tax office helps pay for some of their um, rental losses. Family assistance office don't like that. So if you've got $100,000 taxable income, that included like a $10,000 rental loss, 
Well, that gets added back to your income by $10,000 and your adjusted income then becomes $110,000. Okay, so there's a few other things I think, but they're the main ones that I could think of where your taxable income gets adjusted to become your what they call the separate net income. And that's the number that they use to calculate your childcare subsidy. So as you see, it's a little bit confusing. So when someone, the family assistance office asks you at the start of the year, and they might be doing this for family tax benefits purposes anyhow, it's not as straightforward as you first think. So particularly if you've got any of those things happening. Okay. So that's how you work it out. <clears throat> okay, the second one is the activity level of parents. Now the activity like we talked about is probably just going to be how much work you're doing. But basically the higher the level of activity, the more hours you're able to get your childcare subsidized. Makes sense. Like if you're working more, they'll give you more subsidy pretty so basically families can access up to a maximum of 100 hours per fortnight that's that's the maximum now we'll get to uh, in a second actually how you can access 100 hours um of childcare. but basically the the more you work the more hours you get it sort of stops some um, people just like not working and see putting their children in childcare. okay so now, like I said before, the obvious thing is working, but there's other things that can take the place of working. For example, studying and training. So you could be um, part-time university or part-time TAFE, or um, you need to do a certificate three and above, which yeah, a TAFE course, um, that constitutes um, activity. Other things could be, you could be looking for work. Um, you could be on paid maternity leave or paid leave of any type, long service leave, annual leave, things like that. But the looking for work is an interesting one because to me, there is no set um, hours or anything like that to look for work. And looking for work could be looking through the paper or looking online, um, looking for work. So it's one of those things that um, it's up to you in a lot of cases. You don't actually have to prove too much to it's not like in the good old days of Centrelink and um, when you're on um, New Start or anything like that, you have to go and show the job interviews you went through or anything like that. Nothing like that. It's just your uh, your word against them. Um, unpaid work in a family business is always a good one. A lot of people um, do that and they say we're not being paid for it, um, but it still goes towards activity. Um, volunteering is always a good one. Now. Volunteering at the tuck shop, the local tuck shop, doesn't count. But what we're talking about is volunteering is working at Red Cross, um, Salvation Army, and a few things like that. Um, now, you're obviously not getting paid for it, so therefore it doesn't appear in your um, income or anything like that. But it's volunteering actually goes towards your activity level, which is important. So as you can see, there's lots of things that actually go into, um, uh, go into the calculation. Oh, a couple of other ones. Self-employed, very important that one because um, self-employed people now, it's very difficult to actually work out how many hours you're um, working as a self-employed person, but the tax office don't, or the sorry, family assistance office don't know either, so they actually just take your word for it, um, which is really important. Okay. Um, so there's some exemptions. Um, um, basically, um, if you can't... Um, there will be exemptions who legitimately cannot meet this activity test requirement, um, basically to support participation in school. There's also, um, um, was it parents whose hours of work vary? So if you're sort of on casual or shift work, like they're sort of, I think they're fairly flexible in looking at like the fortnightly um, averages and things like that. I just got there as a, I look at a three month average. And, um, and actually there's one really good exception and I'll go through that's the bottom one there is basically there's a child safety net for families earning less than $66,958. So that was if you go back to that graph. So that was where you're in your 85% category. So if you're in that category, 
basically you don't have to show your activity. So if a family's earning less than 66,958 or less, basically, and you don't meet the um, activity test, you still get 24 hours a fortnight of subsidized care. No questions asked, okay? They just sort of do that. Now, you might want more than 24 hours. If you want 20, more than 24 hours, well, you've got to pass the tests, okay? Um, and I'll go through the, the, the actual tests um, exemptions in a minute. But that's that's just a, a simple one, whereas they call it a, a safety net. Um, so basically, if you can, if you're doing zero activity, you get 24 hours of subsidized care, which is good. Okay. Now, the hours activity. So this is the number one thing, is that the parent or guardian with the lowest hours of activity per fortnight will be, be will determine the hours of subsidized care okay so if you're um a couple they only look at the person with the least amount of activity that's the rules i'm just the messenger um okay so then there's a table and this is again um, income tested. So go back to that graph I showed earlier. So this is a family. You got to earn up to three hundred and fifty-one thousand two hundred forty-eight dollars. Okay. Because after that you don't get anything. So between zero and eight hours per fortnight. Remember, the family assistance office like Centrelink work everything on fortnights. So if you want to convert it to weeks, you can. So zero to eight hours a fortnight, you don't get any subsidy. Now, having said that, there is the, the safety net. If you earn less than $66,000, you do get the 24 hours. So, But this is assuming you're over the $66,000. And again, you've got to understand it's the lower activity person if, you're, um, if you've got a spouse. If you're a single person, it's just you. Okay, so because you are the lowest, you don't have a, anyone else. Okay, so between eight hours and 16 hours per fortnight, you're allowed to get 36 hours of subsidy per fortnight. Greater than 16 hours, up to 48 hours, you get 72 hours a fortnight of subsidized care. And once you get over 48 hours a fortnight, which is Again, if you think about it, it's only 24 hours a week for the person on the lower hours of activity, you get 100 hours a fortnight or 50 hours a week of subsidized childcare. That seems fairly reasonable. So I guess what they're looking at here, and this used to be very similar rules to what the childcare benefit was. They didn't like people um, putting their child into childcare and then sitting at home watching Oprah. They want you to actually have some activity. Um, where it was different with child with the childcare um, benefit, they would give you the 24 hours, no questions asked. And then after that, you needed to show some activity. Here, it's you've got to show at least eight hours a fortnight, which is four hours a week. So really, four hours a week. Now, like I said, if you go back to some of the activity levels, like looking for work, like if you, or doing some study, like if you can't come up with a bit of study or looking for work for at least four hours a week um, to get your, um, to get your 36 hours, well, you're not really trying um, that hard. Okay, so this is just an example I did where um, if you've got two people, one, you know, one parent is doing 76 hours a fortnight um, and the other one is doing 27. Um, so therefore, um, you know, yeah, so that was pretty straightforward. So this one's important, like if you've got two activities, so like if Kate here has an example where she works 14 hours um, per fortnight, 
and she studies for 16 hours. So she's working 14 and 16. That's pretty simple, you just add the two together and she gets 30 hours. Pretty simple. So 30 hours will put her into that one of those middle categories and she gets up to 72 hours a fortnight. Okay, so it's not just taking your work or your study, you actually add them together. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so I hope everyone's got those parts of the combination. One is the, the family income. And I'll go and that what that family income is, it gives you your subsidy level. So if I had that graph back up again and you worked out what your income was after all the adjustments, you sort of you might be 50%, you might be somewhere between 85 and 50, might be below 50 down to 20%. And the last thing then is the types of the childcare centres. So what we're going to do there is that the main thing here is there's two types effectively. There's registered centres and there's approved childcare centre. And it's really important to understand the difference because basically registered childcare centres, um, you don't get any subsidy. Under the old system, the registered centres at least used to get some childcare benefit. You didn't get any childcare rebate, but you got some of the benefit. Now under the subsidy, you don't get anything. Okay, so it's really important to know that. And your childcare centre will know that. A lot of the preschools, the nine till three, um, council owned preschools are probably registered, but you can never tell. You actually need to go to your childcare centre and ask them. So if you're one of those parents who are looking at putting your child into um, into um, childcare centres, that's the one of the first questions you need to ask. Are you a registered centre or are you an approved childcare centre? Really, really important. Um, <clears throat> Like I said, registered childcare centres from the 2nd of July 2018, the subsidies will cease, pretty much. Um, like I said, they're, they're the types of places, you know, um, some of the before and after school cares are approved, some of them are registered. You just need to go and ask. Okay, so childcare centres. So basically they've been approved by um, the government under the, um, the CCB um, process and um, they sort of meet certain standards. So a lot of them are the long daycare centres and the family daycare centres. A lot of the before and after school care centres are approved now because they realise that it's really important to, uh, to do that. And some of the occasional childcare is as well. But you just need to ask. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky because um, the childcare centres charge fees because that's what they do. The childcare subsidies, and what we talked about, the 85%, the 50% and things like that, that's the subsidy on the fees, but only up to a certain amount, okay? And that certain amount, the family assistance officers determine on, depending on what type of centre you go to, okay? So these are the caps, the hourly caps. So basically a centre, um, you know, a normal childcare centre, they're capped at $11.77 per hour. A family daycare at $10.90. An outside um, school care, like a before and after school care is $10.29. And an in-home one is $25.48 per hour per family. Now, they're the latest rates. Now these things have changed. Even since it first started, you know, a year ago, the rates have already gone up. Um, so as of um, today, which is, um, you know, sometime in June uh, 2019, these are the correct um, rates, but they could go up next week. So a lot of people, the most common one there is the centre-based daycare. So that's, everyone's sort of familiar with those ones. So that's the $11.77. So when I go through a lot of the examples in a minute, I'm going to be based it on $11.77 per hour. Okay. So, so I've done this graph to try and explain how it actually works. So let's assume, so like I said, there's three things that determine how much subsidy you're going to get. The first thing is your family earnings. Now we've been through those that section as your taxable income with all the adjustments. So for this example, let's assume 
the family's income is $65,000 a year combined. Okay. And your percentage then base, remember that graph I did? So you're before the $66,000, so your percentage is 85%. Okay. No one gets 100% anymore. Okay. So you're 85%. So I've got three different examples here. So imagine you go to a childcare centre and they charge $9 an hour. So you might go for 10 hours, you might go for eight hours, who knows? But their rate is $9 an hour. So for this family, what happens is your subsidy is 85% of the $9. So in this case, the subsidy is $7.65. So that's the subsidy, and then the parents have to pay $1.35, which is the 15%. Pretty straightforward, because you know, you're under the cap. Under the old method, it used to actually be, the rate used to be on the cap, not on actually what gets paid. That's a big difference. So that's pretty straightforward, everyone gets that. Imagine though, a childcare centre charges $12 an hour. So in this case, they're just over what the subsidy level is, $11.77, they're just above it. So what happens here is that the subsidy is 85% of the cap. So you've got to look at which one's the lowest, the fees the childcare centre charges or the cap. Whatever the lowest one of those two is what the subsidy is charged on. So in this case, 85% of $11.77, not $12. And that happens to be $10. So therefore, in this situation, when you've got a childcare centre that's charging $12 an hour, um, so if you go there 10 hours a day, that's $120 of one of the more expensive childcare centres. The In this situation, this example here, the family gets a $10 subsidy and they have to pay $2 an hour. That's the way it works out. And the third example here is if you go to a childcare centre that's charging $15 an hour, one of the more expensive ones. What happens here is you, the subsidy is still only 85% of $11.77. So as you can see in this example, it's still $10. So what actually happens here, if you go to one of those more expensive ones, the family, you've got to pay for the difference because the, the, the subsidy stays exactly the same at $10. Okay, so hopefully that sort of explains it. I've got another one here, which um, makes it a little bit easier. So in this example here, let's assume the family is earning somewhere between $170,000 and $250,000. So remember on my graph, you sort of, you've gone from the 85 that slid down at 1% uh, for every $3,000, and then it's got to a, like a flat bit. So I'm just talking about that, somewhere on that flat bit, okay? So the percentage there is 50%, so nice and easy to work out. If you're somewhere between 66 and 170, it's somewhere between 85 and 50%. So you might be 71, you might be whatever it is. This one's nice and easy because it's 50%. So in this situation here, same thing, you go to a childcare centre that's charging $9 an hour. Because you're only getting 50% subsidy, what happens is the subsidy is $4.50, which is 50% of $9. So the childcare subsidy is $4.50 and the parents pay $4.50. Pretty straightforward. The other example where it's $12 an hour, so again, it's 50% of the cap because the cap is less than the $12. So 50% of $11.77 is $5.89 is what the subsidy is, and then therefore the parents have to pay for $6.11. And the third example, just to round it off, is if you go into the childcare centre that's $15 an hour, again, the subsidy is the same, $5.89, which is 50% of the cap, and the parents have to pay the bit on top of that, which is a fair bit, $9.11 per hour. And that's multiplied by how many hours um, a fortnight that you go. Now, we did talk earlier, there is a cap. Remember about $186,000? So if you multiply it out there and you're getting 50%, so it's at $5.89, say you're going uh, 10 hours um, a day, 
So that works out about $58, $59 is your subsidy per week. So if you multiply that out over 50 weeks, remember the cap's about $10,000, you're gonna struggle to get to that cap anyhow. So even though there is a cap there, just because of the way it works is your subsidy amount isn't particularly high. Um, and you can only do 100 hours a fortnight anyhow. So if you get the calculator out, <clears throat> it's very difficult for anyone to actually go over that cap if you're, um, if you're around, around the 50% um, percentage. Okay, so um, yeah, I've done a few examples here. So um, this one here, we talked about the cap. So imagine your family income is $65,000. So again, you're less than $66,000. So you're gonna get 85%. Um, this, you're under the cap of $186,000. With this one here, you're entitled to 36 hours of subsidy. Now, the example I'm trying to do here is that this family just has 16 hours a fortnight and they got one child. Um, basically, the way it works is the childcare raise $11.77. The hourly fee um, happens to be uh, $16.25 per day. And then there's um, the hours um, that they go to is 32 because they're doing 16 hours a week. I don't, it's one of those examples that, you know, I think the other one explains it a, a little bit better. So in this situation here, the total fee is $16.25, which is $520. The subsidy is $320, so the family has to pay um, $200. Example number two, we've talked about this before. If your income goes up to $180,000, therefore you've got a 50% um, percent, um, childcare subsidy. In this example here, someone's working um, activities 48 hours. Oh, that was, sorry, that was the activity. Uh, so therefore they're entitled to 72 hours um, per fortnight. They've got one child. So again, same thing is that they're, um, in this example here, the, the childcare center is charging $17.50 um, per hour, the child goes there 48 um, hours a fortnight, which is you know, six days um, at eight hours a day. So therefore the total fees they're paying is $17.50 by 48 hours. So it's actually $840. The subsidy works out at, um, and this situation is 50% of the $11.77, not the $17.50. So the subsidy is $282. So the family has to pay um, $558. So the childcare subsidy is there at 50% and it's $11.77, not the $17.50. I think the, the graph one works out a little bit better to try and understand than, than this one. All right, so um, the childcare safety net, so we talked about that, um, is um, something that's always been around. So, um, all right, well, I hope that explained um, the childcare subsidy. Now, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I have done some other webinars just on each of those three sections. So if you wanna go and have a look at those in more detail, it goes through a lot more examples. Uh, but I just thought this one would be a really good update. Um, some of the numbers have changed um, since it first was introduced. Um, if you'd like to, um, let me know what you thought of the video. Please um, drop me uh, uh, an email at info.12.com.au or give me a call. Um, more than happy to talk to anyone, try and clarify everything. Um, and otherwise, check out my um, Facebook page, Dr. Wilson Health. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.